Shalom, shalom. Two House Restoration of Yisrael. This is the book of Shemot, Exodus. Exodus. Okay, we're going to start. This is uh, part one. We should have done this before, but we kind of started doing videos late. Um, so, we have a notes. We made our own notes on a little intro before we start Shemot. I'm going to let my wife read it real quick. Alrighty, so before we get into Exodus, we actually wanted to end Bereshit or Genesis with the final passage from Yosef. And if we can go to Bereshit 50, verse 24 and 25. Genesis chapter 50, verse 24 to 25, and it says, Now Yosef said to his brothers, I am dying, but Elohim will surely visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob. Yosef took an oath from the children of Yisrael, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So basically, to pick up where we left off, um, Yosef and his family, which are Hebrews, or the sons of Yisrael, are in Egypt, Mitzrayim. Because of Yosef's influence and position, and I know you're going to want to not cut yourself off. There you That's go. That's good. That's all right. right. Um, so, however, the prophecy that took place in Genesis 15:13 is now being fulfilled and starting to come to fruition. So, if we can go to the better sheets, 15:13. 15:13. Yeah. And it reads, and he said to Abraham, or Abram. Know for certain that your seed are to be sojourners in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. Mm -hmm. And then we know that the sons of Israel were in the land for 430 years, according to Shemot or Exodus 1240. Um, so at this point, we can begin our first portion of Shemot. Okay. So What's our first passage? One, we got seven. one verse seven. Okay. 1 verse 7, it says, chapter 1 verse 7 of Exodus of Shemot. The children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them. Mm -hmm. So here we already see the fulfillment of the multiplication starting to happen. Okay, there in the land. What's next? Next one is 223 to 25. 223 to 25. And again, what we're doing is showing the progression of the covenants. There are multiple covenants, and that is, we're starting to see what he already, what Yahuwah already spoke to Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov. So we're trying we're to. Also, what we're trying to do is we're tracking the birth and development of Yahuwah's chosen people, which is Israel. So far, what we're seeing is his chosen people are Yisrael. Those are his chosen people. So we're trying to track the development. So we're not going into every detail, but we're this is basically consider this a survey of the two house restoration of Israel. Let's put it that way. Okay, a survey of the gospel. The a survey of the good news of the kingdom. Trust me. You'll see where this is going. Just stay, stick with us, stick with these videos. And you'll see where we're going, but we, we got to get the context. So it may seem like we're cherry picking scriptures, and we are, but you know we, we feel like we're, we're, we have a specific focus right now. We're trying to focus on the, the development, the birth and development, destruction and restoration of Yahuwah's chosen people. Okay, because the scriptures is all about the restoration of all things anyway. Uh, Exodus chapter 2, verse 23 to 25, and it reads, In the course of those many days, the king of Egypt, Mitzrayim, died, and the children of Israel sighed because of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up to Elohim because of the bondage. Elohim heard their groaning, and Elohim remembered his covenant with Abram, with Yitzhak, and with Yaakov. Elohim saw the children of Israel. And Elohim was concerned about them. You need anything or you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, you can start. Um, I love in this verse twenty, uh, verse twenty-four. Oops, I can't see it. So I don't have it up. 
where it says that Elohim heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Like that's what he's recalling after all their, their groaning and their, their affliction that's coming up to him. What does he recall? The covenant that he's made. So I just find that very interesting and intriguing. Pause. Okay. Um, yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's a, he's a Elohim of covenant and he's pointing back to that. Okay. And, and there's a lot of that. We're going to see that more throughout the scriptures, constantly pointing back to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Next. Three, seven and verse 10. Chapter so. three, verse seven. Here we go. I'm trying to keep this right to the point. Mm -hmm. I'm not fancy. I'm not a quote unquote teacher. Okay. I believe I am a teacher. I teach. That's just what I'm doing right now. I'm teaching you something. But am I a rabbi? No. Uh, in the sense of what people know as rabbis today, I don't like to give a lot of flowery words to when I speak. I like to stick right to the point and go into it. If I can go in more detail, I will. But I'm not. Okay. I'm trying to keep it real simple. I'm trying to give you an overview, a survey of this, of this topic. Chapter 3, verse 7. And Yahuwah said, I have indeed seen the oppression of my people who are in Mitzrayim and have heard their cry because of their slaves, drivers, for I know their sorrows. Okay? For their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And verse 10. And verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Yisrael, out of Egypt. So this is very clear. Bring my people, the children of Yisrael. This is his people. This is who his people are. Yisrael. It's very clear. Okay? What's the goal? To bring them out of this land of bondage. Okay? So we have the birth of Yisrael in the book of, of Genesis, better sheet, okay? Then we have uh, the developmental stages of Yisrael as we're going into Egypt, as they get to grow there. They get to have a land when, when the other land of, of uh, Canaan is going through a drought and they have a place of refuge, a place that they can grow, a place that they can harvest, a place that they can multiply. Okay, but now we've gotten to a point of bondage, and they're they're growing up. Okay, they're probably in uh, in in. Uh, uh, we'll get into that yeah. later. That's the book of uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Phase, yeah. <laughs> okay, but here they are. They're growing up, and uh, they're they're in bondage. Mm -hmm. What's next? Same chapter, chapter three, mm -hmm. verses thirteen to fifteen. Okay, thirteen to fifteen. Moses said to Elohim. Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and tell them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What should I tell them? Elohim said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, You shall tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. A lot of people like to stop there. But we got to keep going. Verse 15, Elohim said, Moreover to Moses, You shall tell the children of Israel this, Yahuwah, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Jacob, has sent me to you. So his name is not Ahaya. Ahaya, Ahaya. Okay? That is, that is what he told them to tell them who sent them, the I am. That means the existing one. The one who exists. But it's Yahuwah, okay, which means the same thing. But I am that I am. It's just, he's just the one that exists. But Yahuwah is his name. You're not going to see I am that I am everywhere in scripture. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial to all generations. What does that mean? You shall remember my name forever. Not hide it. Not protect it in, by hiding. You protect it by remembering. By sharing it with your children. And your children's children. 
So was that it to 15? Yeah, and then we're going to read another section. And also yeah. just to point out, I mean, in the scriptures, it's been translated so many times. I mean, over 6,000 times, I think. It changes his name to Lord. Uh, and it's just it's just disrespectful. It's just a disservice, honestly. If he's put his name in there, it's for a reason. If he wanted us to just say Lord all the time, he would have put that there. I mean, it's very simple rather than writing it out. So it's not Hashem. It's not Adonai. I mean, those are just titles, just titles. And there is, there is, it's a privilege to be able to call on Yahuwah. And he tells us um, to be able to call on his name. So wonderful. Next two verses, same chapter, chapter three, verses 16 to 17. 15. 16 to 17. 16 to 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shemot, Exodus chapter 3, 16 and 17. Go and gather the elders of Yisrael together and tell them, Yahuwah, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham and Yitzhak and of Yaakov has appeared to me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt and Mitzrayim. I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. They will listen to your, your voice. You shall come, you and the elders of Yisrael, to the king of Mitzrayim, and you shall tell them, Yahuwah, the Elohim of the Hebrews, has met with us. Now please let us go three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to Yahuwah, our Elohim. That's it. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, wasn't Abraham in Canaan before? Mm -hmm. Weren't they in Canaan before? And, and Yahuwah promised him, look north, look south, look east, and look west. Mm -hmm. This All of this land is going to be yours. Mm -hmm. yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was prophetic. That was back in Bereshit. Okay. But then they all went through a famine. They left. Yahuwah brought a famine upon that land. And they were able to go to Egypt. It was all part of his plan. It's all prophetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now he's saying, I'm going to take you back to that land. Yep. Flowing with milk and honey. Sounds a little weird. Like, wait a minute. Wasn't that the land I was going through? A, 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 what do you call it? Famine. A famine and everything? Mm -hmm. But now it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think he could have chosen any land he wanted to. He could have chosen any land, you know, but that's the land he chose. We cannot, we can't make stuff up. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what's written. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in this book, if you believe in the scriptures, you got to believe what he's saying. There is a p particular geographic area that Yahuwah has chosen to put his name there and and his favor in that place okay so far that's what we're seeing right so far so if you're a christian watching just stick with me we're, we're going with what the scripture is saying so far if it changes we'll see the changes throughout scripture would you agree yes if, and you probably already know the passages that says it's changed but we're gonna get there just hang on all right what's next no uh, oh, real quick, something? yeah just real yeah. quick so in this Again, we're trying to see the reiteration of phrases while we keep repeating ourselves. In verse 16, it says, Who Elohim is the Elohim of? Elohim Very of good. Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Uh, not of Ishmael. You know, so let's just... Esau. You know, Esau. I mean, he's very specific in, in who he's saying he's the Elohim of, and it's to track the covenants. I mean, he, he broke covenants with these people, not break as in disregard them break them as in to create them so uh let's see next one will be shemot four chapter four mm -hmm. verse 22 and 23 22 and 23 okay 22 and 23 and it reads you shall tell pharaoh yahuwah says yisrael is my son my firstborn and I have said to you, let my son go, that he may serve me. And you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will kill your firstborn. 23, right? Yep. 
So what we got for those notes here? Um, so here is that Yahuwah distinguishes Israel not only as his son, but as his firstborn. And just recall that Jacob, later named Yisrael, received the firstborn blessing that was due to Esau. But Esau despised his birthright and sold it to his brother. And if Pharaoh was not going to let go of Yahuwah's firstborn, then he'd take away Pharaoh's firstborn. So here, the children of Yisrael are considered firstborn, mm -hmm. even though they were, they came from the loins of Jacob, mm -hmm. Jacob, and Jacob was not uh, the firstborn, like you said. Mm -hmm. He, but he was able to get the firstborn uh, blessing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and again, I mean, this just shows time periods necessarily are not. How Yahuwah works. For example, Yisrael wasn't even a nation, and yet, I mean, there were other nations before Yisrael was even created, and yet Yisrael is called his firstborn. But we clearly know that man was already inhabiting the earth. There was already nations forming. You already have Egyptians and all this. But Yahuwah, it's not us. It's not saying certain people. Yahuwah himself is saying, "This is my chosen people. These are my chosen people, and this is my chosen nation, and they are my firstborn." I mean, he, it's, it's just him setting up that parameter. So. Very good. Uh, then we're going to go to chapter Yeah, so by the way, I'm not there. seeing our notes. So so feel free to jump in because I'm not seeing the notes. Okay. I'll freestyle. <laughs> I'll freestyle by memory what I remember. <laughs> well, let's we'll go. What's next? Uh, chapter 6. Hopefully we can get this whole video done today. Part 1 of Exodus. Yeah. Chapter 6. 4 to 8. 4 to 8. Chapter 6, 4 to 8. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their travels in which they lived as aliens. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians, the Mitzrites, keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, tell the children of Israel, I am Yahuwah. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Mitzriites, the Egyptians. And I will rid you of their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you to myself for a people. I will be your Elohim. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brings you out. From under the burdens of the Egyptians. This is very essential. He is declaring, I'm going to take you to myself for a people. You are going to be my people. They're already his people, but he's making it extremely clear. <laughs> okay? He's making a covenant with them. Verse 8, I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and Jacob. And I will give it to you for a heritage. I am Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to say anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what he just noted here was that Moshe or Moses is, he's become very intimate with Yahuwah. I mean, he sees him in the, the burning bush. Um, Yahuwah speaks to him as a man speaks with, uh, as friend to friend, right? Did I say that right? Yeah. As words a friend speaks to a friend face to <laughs> yeah. face. That's what the scripture says. Um, and then in these particular verses that he was just reading, Yahuwah reiterates part, part of his covenant again with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and that he mentions the land, his people, and being their Elohim. So we're seeing repetition again. It's just repetition, 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 repetition. And then sometimes we see just a little extra more of the covenant. I'm going to be your Elohim, and this is the land, and these are my people. So, beautiful story. Okay, we're not going to read these chapters. Okay, but chapter 7 to 11, okay, chapter 7 to 11, within the next few chap these, these chapters, we see the plagues rolling out and some judgments from Yahuwah coming against Egypt. It is interesting that for some of the plagues, Yahuwah's people don't feel the repercussions such as their livestock not being killed or the gnats not going into the land of Goshen where they dwelt. So they're being protected, okay, from all those plagues. Chapter 11, uh... The death of the firstborn is announced by Moses, but Pharaoh does not heed this warning. Okay. I might want to see if we can look for that real quick, because I think it mentions firstborn again in there. Chapter 11. Chapter 
verse 6. I'll just point this out real quick. Um, or verse 4. Moses said, This is what Yahuwah says. About midnight I will go out into the middle of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of livestock. There will be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been, nor will be any more. But against any of the children of Israel, a dog won't even bark or move its tongue against the man or animal, that you may know that Yahuwah makes a distinction between the Egyptians and Israel. And this is what it's all about. I mean, I know, you know, I might get a little mystery sold level right now, but this is what it's all about. It's separating Yisrael from everyone else. That's what it's all about. There is a distinction. There's a difference. Okay. Um, and these servants of yours will, will come down to me and bow down themselves to me saying, get out with all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. He went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. And Yahuwah said to Moses, Pharaoh won't listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but Yahuwah hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he didn't let the children of Israel go out of his land. So that's chapter 11. What do we have next? Uh, we are going to get into chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 2. Okay, verse 2. Focusing on the, the new year. This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Israel is given a new year with the beginning of the year starting with the month Abib or Nisan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's, he's starting to give them a calendar, okay, for time, to keep in time. So he's already... He's starting to make some changes. And I'm sure the Egyptians had their own calendars. But right now he's starting to say, guess what, guys? Happy New Year. Okay? Remember this moment. Our calendar, the believer's calendar, should revolve around this moment. Wow. That the chosen people were delivered from bondage. And their development began. As to become a people, to become a nation, to become a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Our calendar should revolve around that. But what's going on today? We go by the calendar of the world. We go by Greco-Roman calendar. Yeah, the Indian New Year's, Chinese New Year, every other New Year's. And people are so proud to celebrate the New Year. It's so proud. It's an exciting time. Resolutions going around left and right. Just... The hype about it, I mean, here, at least in America, everyone wants to go see the ball drop, just watch this big crystal dropping down, and that marks a whole new year, and it's just kind of revitalizing. Guilty as charged. Yeah. Guilty as charged. Yeah, likewise. I Not anymore. I repent of that. Not anymore. Yeah. And then it's like... Why not what you who established in the scriptures? I mean, how much more are we supposed to be set apart? Because we don't know the real calendar. We can't yeah. really tell. Wrong. You want to know why? Because back in Genesis chapter 1, Yahuwah created the moon, the sun, and the stars for what? For signs, times, seasons. for signs, for seasons. Okay, which are appointed times. times yeah. Meaning a calendar. The celestial, the celestial uh, uh, creation is for, for a calendar. Mm -hmm. It's to help us keep track of time. Even pagans know this. You know? But in Christianity, it gets completely lost. Mm -hmm. No one talks about it. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Your church might talk about it. My church, did that. the five churches I've ever been to never talked about it. Yeah. Okay? Last but we celebrated. But we celebrate the year, the New Year's. We did the cedar. They did the cedar. Okay, that was the you know the mm -hmm. Jews Judeo version of the Passover. Mm -hmm. But uh, Even we were celebrating the New Year. We were happy mm -hmm. celebrating with the International House of Prayer, Kansas City. We we're all woo! Happy New Year! In January, he's talking about speaking January. in fake tongues. Guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. You know. Just pagan, just just pagan worship. Mm -hmm. 
just blind. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, we're going to keep going. Okay, it's, right. not, it's not about this. <laughs> but this is important, though. Mm -hmm. This is the calendar. We're talking about the development of Yahuwah's chosen people. And so what calendar should we be trying to keep? What calendar should we be spending our energy to try to know? It's mm -hmm. Yahuwah's calendar. Then we go to verses 3 to 13. Okay. 3 to 13. And it says, Speak to the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's house, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too little for a lamb, then he and his neighbor next to his house shall take one according to the number of the souls, you shall make your count for the lamb according to what everyone can eat. Your lamb shall be without defect, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at evening. How far? 2.13. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel. On the houses in which they shall eat it. Okay, so they're going to put it on the doorpost, on the side, and the lintel, which is on the ground. And from what I heard from a brother in the congregation, he said that in the Middle Eastern, in, in the Middle East, it's very serious to go beyond the threshold of the uh, the bottom part of, of a door. It's like when you when you pass over that, you're like entering into a covenant with them. And so it's it's pretty significant. I think it's significant that the blood was put on the doorposts of the houses where is a place that is covenantal. So anyway, something for you to dig into. Um, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintel on the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the meat in that night roasted with fire and unleavened bread. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Don't eat it raw nor boiled at all with water but roasted with fire with its heads, its legs, and its inner parts. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, but that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. This is how you shall eat it, with your belt on your waist, your shoes on your feet, and with your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahuwah's Passover. Man, this is a perfect day to, you know, get some extra clothing that you don't wear on a normal basis. You know, you get to do some role play. <laughs> You know, enjoy and share this moment with your family every year. I want to do that. We need to do that next year. I need to get me a staff like Brother Jonathan Greer. Jonathan Greer, he goes all out. My brother Jonathan, he gets the, he gets the robe. He got the shoes. He gets the staff. He goes in. I want to, I want to do that. Okay, this is the Jewish Passover. Wrong. This is not the Jewish Passover. This is Yahuwah's Passover. This is the Creator's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt in that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and animal. I will execute judgments against all the mighty ones of Egypt. I am Yahuwah. The blood shall be to you for a token of the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague will be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Mitzrayim, of Egypt. This day shall be a memorial for you. You shall keep it as a feast, a celebration, a festival to Yahuwah. You shall keep it as a feast throughout your generations by an ordinance forever. Seven days. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away yeast out of your houses. For whatever or for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Yisrael. In the first day there shall be to you a set-apart convocation. Okay? A moedim. And in the seventh day a set-apart convocation, no kind of work shall be done in them, except that which every man must eat, only that he may be done by you. So convocation is a uh, uh, set-apart time. Uh, let's, let's look it up real quick. Convocation is 
So a reading together, a reciting, convoking, convocation, a sacred assembly, a reading. So that's the definitions here. I don't see any problems with these definitions. Makes sense. This is a place to remember. Remember. We want to remember Memorial Day. We want to remember Fourth of July. But we don't want to remember Yahuwah's times. There's a big problem with that. Verse 17. And you shall guard this festival of unleavened bread. Or you shall guard unleavened bread for... On this same day, I brought your divisions. I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations by an ordinance forever. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay. In these verses, Yahuwah gives specific instructions on what to do for Passover. We believe it is important to note that these instructions are not necessarily what to do for every year since there is an actual event and then there's the memorial event for the future. Example, the 4th of July, like I was saying earlier, the 4th of July, there was actual a, there was an actu actually a war. Okay? And now there is a memorial thereof. Just like the U.S. celebrates its independence from Britain, so the people of Yahuwah celebrate the remembrance of our forefathers being taken out of captivity. However, we are back in exile to this day and still can't keep Passover in its entirety as prescribed in the scriptures. But we can still celebrate the memorial of it as it is a feast commanded by Yahuwah. So we got some brothers, the congregation that we visit, they go all out. They actually get a lamb. They put it down. They take the blood and put it on the doorpost. I mean, like, they, they go all in. Okay? They do a whole rehearsal of, it. rehearsal of it. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay? If the scriptures is telling us to do that, we if we have the ability to do that, we should do that. Um, we know it's expensive to buy a lamb. And... But I think the more mature, again, this is, you know, we are all growing, okay? We're all growing, and, you know, there's some things that we need to get conviction of and grow into, all right? So, but the point that I'm trying to make is at least try to remember this. That's a starting point. At least, at least recognize it. You know what I'm saying? When Easter comes around, renounce Easter. I'm talking to you Christians and I'm talking to all you new baby Israelites, those who have come into the faith, who have been coming out of darkness, who've been coming out of the, the harlot church, Christianity, okay? All you people and Christians, don't, don't get too offended. Sorry, don't, don't turn that off, okay? Stay, stay with me here. Stay with me. But I'm talking to my Israelite, my young Israelite brothers who are just coming into all this. And sisters. And sisters. Renounce <laughs> Easter. Renounce it. Say it. I renounce it. Father, I renounce this right now in the name of Yahushua HaMoshiach. Mm -hmm. Right now, I renounce Easter. I will never celebrate that again. As for me and my house, we will serve Yahuwah. We will serve you. Okay? And we will remember your feast days. We will remember your, your, your set-apart days. All right? Okay. Continue. Let's see. However, we're back in exile to this day. And still can't keep Passover in its entirety as prescribed in the scriptures, but we can still celebrate the memorial of it as it is a feast commanded by Yahuwah. The reason we can't fully keep it as prescribed in the scriptures is because one of the requirements is to sacrifice the Passover lamb in the land that Yahuwah says to. Okay, some would disagree. Some would disagree, and that's fine. I, I understand that. I think there's a... And we might get there in the future, but there's a land that does have to be given in, in the promised land for the priest. But then there's lambs that are slaughtered in each house. But we'll get to that in the future. And if I'm wrong, we will see it. And I will make a video on it. Next. Okay. Chapter 13, verse 1 to 10. Woo! We got a lot to go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 13, 1 to 10. Okay. Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Sanctify to me all the firstborn. 
Whatever opens the womb amongst the children of Israel, both of man and of animal, it is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Yahuwah brought you out from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. Today you go out in the month of Bib. It shall be when Yahuwah brings you into the land of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flown with milk and honey, that you shall keep this service in this month. You see, so he's saying that when you get to that land, you are going to keep this service in this month every year. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahuwah. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days, and no leavened bread shall be seen with it with you. No yeast shall be seen with you within all your borders. You shall tell your son in that day, saying, It is because of that which Yahuwah did for me when I came out of Egypt. So when people are asking you, D, why are you keeping this? You're not a Jew. Um, I'm an Israelite, and I worship the... Elohim, the God of the Bible that you proclaim to believe in. And yes, this is the reason why I'm doing it is because it is because of what Yahuwah did for me when I came out of Egypt. Even though you weren't really there, but you're an Israelite, so you take a little, you know, you take a little pride in that. Just like you're an American, this is when we uh, conquered Britain and we won the war against Britain and I'm an American. You take so much pride in being American, but, you know, not knowing that if you're a believer in the Messiah, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. No, go for it. Go for it. If you're a believer in the <laughs> Messiah, <laughs> what is the Messiah? He's an Israelite. Okay. You become what he is. And if you are a citizen of Israel, then that means that you are a foreigner in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Spiritually speaking. So we're citizens of another kingdom. We were born here, yes. We're citizens physically here as far as this government is concerned and according to the laws and statutes of this government. But our true allegiance is with another man. Our allegiance is with another king. Our allegiance is with another land. Hallelujah. So if you believe in this book, Okay, and that's why you're going to start seeing more persecution coming because this country doesn't like people who speak this way. We are considered terrorists. We are considered a danger to America. You know, and the patriot the patriots are like, "Hey, if you don't like America, leave." So, we're going to see more and more of this as we get closer to the end end of end of this age. Okay? We're going to see more persecution come. People are going to hate people that are true Israelites, that have their hope and their and their anchor in the coming kingdom. What else do we have? All righty. So. Did so, I read all that? I read uh, the 10. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its seasons from year to year. And um, so with this one, is basically going back to verse 5, where... He reminds us of the covenant of the promised land. It's repetition. Again, in verse 8, he's telling us that we are to remind our children why we rem remember this special time. And part of the feast, of, part of the purpose, excuse me, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is to be a reminder or a sign that Yahuwah's Torah is to be in our mouths continuously. Even before the events of Mount Sinai, we see that Yahuwah's Torah is already spoken of, his instructions. Um, we don't subscribe to the idea that the Torah or instructions of Yahuwah are only the first five books of Scripture. Amen. But rather, every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah in yes. context of Scripture yes. is a command or instruction to be followed. Amen. Okay, last. Chapters 14 to 16. We're about to end right now. So we already begin to see the swaying of the hearts of the sons of Yisrael. We're not going to read chapters 14 to 16. You can read that for yourself, but... We're starting to see their hearts being swayed away. They're complaining. Okay? They grumble. They complain. Then they praise Yahuwah only later to grumble again. A lot of complaining. You should have left us in Egypt. You know, we have better food there. Okay? Not <laughs> totally forgetting about slavery and bondage. 
We will unfortunately see a lot of this swaying and changing of hearts continuously throughout Scripture, which eventually leads to the divorcing of part of Yisrael. Okay, and now you can continue on to the next video, uh, part two of Exodus Shemot. Mm -hmm. Shalom, hope you enjoy this, and uh, we do have more videos coming in the future. Yes. Enjoy, shalom. Comment, feel free to leave a comment, ask mm -hmm. a question. Uh, we don't know everything. We're just normal, hardworking people. Okay, we work a uh, nine to five. I work forty six hours a week right now. Okay, we're full time working people. We love the scriptures, and we're just sharing what we know. Okay. We reserve the right <laughs> to have our stances changed. Yes. As scriptures revealed. Yes. Um, and that's a big thing. We hold on. I know some people say you you sway, but Honestly, I do. I we, do sway if, if you can show me why I need scripture. to sway. Yeah. I don't sway because man says something. I sway because the scripture says something. Mm -hmm. And if you're not swaying with me, then you ain't. You ain't got the swagger. <laughs> you ain't got the white. You ain't walking right. <laughs> you ain't swaying with me. You gotta sway with me. <laughs> All right. Shalom. Alrighty, shalom. Love you guys.